everybody. Thanks a lot for tuning in. This new series is kind of based on a viewer request. I cannot remember for the life of me where it came from. I don't know if it was YouTube or Twitter, but I think it was one of the two. I'm so, so sorry. But if you're out there and you're listening to this, you know I'm talking to you. Basically what this person wanted to see was some everyday eye looks using palettes that I've talked about in the past. And so I thought, yeah, that's a great idea. It would be a great way to kind of interject some quick tutorials here on my channel. And it's an especially nice time to do this because I've been reorganizing my makeup and digging through so much stuff that a lot of this is now like refreshed in my mind. So I wanted to call this I Remember. So first product I remember is this guy from Wet n Wild. It's the Comfort Zone palette. Don't we all have that somewhere? I'm not so sure if what I've done is an everyday look or maybe a little bit of a nighttime-ish look, but here's what I did. So first things first, I'm gonna apply some Milani Eyeshadow Primer. Love this stuff. Somebody tweeted me recently said, why do you love that so much? Well, it helps my eyeshadow stay a really long time, I feel like. I also think that it's just tacky enough to help the shadows cling and really be more pronounced when I apply them, but it's not so tacky that it's gonna cause any sort of creasing. You know, it's definitely like an anti-creasing thing for me. But also, it's affordable. This is the palette we're gonna use today. It is Wet n Wild Comfort Zone, and I'm trying to even think, like, what direction do I wanna go with this? I think I just need to warm myself up a little bit and put some of this crease shade right in my crease. This is that soft brown, it kind of has a satiny, Finish. There's really a lot of shimmer in this palette. These days I might look at it and be like, I need some mattes in there. But I remember when this was brand new to me and it was just fine. <laughs> I'm not sure if this is my original comfort zone. I actually feel like I had maybe broken my first one and purchased this one actually not that long ago. Then I'm gonna do a little bit of this shade um, right here on like the inner part of my lid. It's kind of like a goldeny light olive. And then I want a little more green showing up, so I'm gonna do some of that. Yes, comfort zone coming back. Then I wanna use some of this crazy definer shade down here that has like that little bit of brownish yet also bluish look to it. It just depends on how you apply it, like how much you pack on. I'm going very little by little because these these uh, shades from Wet n Wild can be very intense, you know. I want to kind of overlap that green a little bit. It's interesting, now that shade's almost looking like a really warm brown. Do a little blending here. And while I got this brush now, I think I'm going to use this kind of buttery shade as my highlight. Just patting on a bit more of that green. I really don't want to lose it in this look. And sometimes you blend, blend, blend around stuff and you start to lose what you originally laid down. So, there's that. And then I think I'm gonna do some dark green. Let's just put the entire palette on, shall we? <laughs> Goodness. I remember wearing this palette so much as like a, a night out kind of look, you know? A smoky eye, a little bit of olive green. Totally my jam for a period of time. It's not like I don't like it now, you know? I just haven't reached for it in a long, long time. Yeah, I forgot how much I love that darkest olive shade. That's great. Even though it's got some shimmer, it looks so good side by side with the lighter uh, green. If you were recreating this look, honestly, you could probably skip that step where I use this color down here because I've sort of gone and covered that up. I think that has more intensity when you're using it just on its own and less overlapping another shade, but you do your thing. And then I think to finish this top part of the eye, um, whoops. I think what I need is just a little bit more of this like caramely light brown, just very softly around the border. Okay, next up, I'm gonna use my Jordana Color Envy liner in Black Envy. I'm just gonna line the upper lash line. 
I kind of think this look calls for a wing. And then despite getting a decent amount of sleep last night, I feel like my eyes just, I don't know, they feel tired. They probably look a little bit tired too. So I think I want to brighten up my lower inner rim. This is the nude from Makeup Geek, the full spectrum pencil. Um, I had used this so long ago. Well, not really that long ago, but like months back. And I couldn't really remember what it did staying power for me. So I wanted to pull this out and try it again. And then I think on the lower lash line, I just want to keep it really like, um, I don't know, caramely brown around this nice little green we've got on the lid. So I'm going to go into this crease shade again, MVP. And we're just going to, just going to smudge that down here. Yeah, it's just kind of, kind of a murky little color. And this is my Sigma E21 smudge brush, by the way. I feel like I've used this brush for so long in my makeup doing days. It's just a really great little brush for lower lash line, whether you want it to be a little bit more buffed out or even more precise. You know, it's just the perfect taper, perfect shape. Then I'm going to go around the tear, ju tear duct, <laughs> not tear duct, just quickly with this uh, buttery shade that I used really softly under the brow as a highlight. But see how you can really lay that down for some brightness? Like this palette can actually create some very brightened, like wide awake type looks. I went, you know, a little bit more on the smoky route with it for right now. But you pop either of these two shades on the lid and make that your crease color, you're like good to go for a natural daytime kind of whatever. I don't know, this is kind of my natural daytime. <laughs> Curling the lashes with my Tweezerman Lash Curler for round eyes, which I absolutely continue to love. Uh, it really just gets in touch with the entire lash line. Don't I don't feel like any lashes are getting left out of it and not getting curled. And it ends up being a really good curl too. And then I'm gonna use some IT Cosmetics Superhero. Love this mascara. started watching The Fosters on Netflix. I can't remember who got me onto that, but it's really good. Really enjoying it. Okay guys, and this is gonna be it. Um, no false lashes today. I'm kind of happy with the lash look um, using that superhero mascara. And if you're wondering what's on my lips, I started out going all like sweet and innocent with this light shade from Makeup Revolution. This is in the color called Awaken. And I think it's like a Charlotte Tilbury knockoff type idea with this rose gold packaging, but I've got that on. And then I deepened it up a little bit on the outsides with the total throwback lip liner, NYX mahogany. Um, this is just one of their standard pencils and I use that on the outer part. And then a little bit of Jouer Lip Topper in Skinny Dip right here in the center of the lower lip. Funny thing is that this is a lip liner I probably reached for quite a bit back in the day with neutral type nude lip looks. But then does anybody remember the Revlon Super Lustrous Lip Gloss in Foiled? That was my jam. <laughs> That, you know, in that day was like what this kind of product is today. It was a total like light, super shimmery lip gloss, always used it on the center of the lower lip, and now like specific products are being created to do that very task. I wish they'd bring back foiled because that was awesome. Anyway, before my concept of a short video turns into a long video, um, I will say goodbye and thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know what uh, rediscovered palette you would like to see a look for in this series. I'd be happy to do it. So thank you guys. Bye.